as modern photographers, there's this vast abundance of gear available to us, most of which allows for incremental increases in our efficiency, little pleasantries, if you will. But they're almost all want-to-haves, not need-to-haves. Now, I do believe that there is an external category of gear of particular significance, the kinds of things that open up our creativity, that actually allow us to separate ourselves. Now, the first ones we'll encounter are our first camera, our first kit lens, our first prime lens. But as we spend more time developing as photographers, it becomes a little bit more niche what's actually going to make us better and better. It might be an underwater housing for one person living on the sea or a wide angle lens for another person that's focused on landscape photography. Or it might be this, the Move Shoot Move Nomad a very small, very cheap star tracker that has redefined the accessibility of night sky photography for so many photographers. It's gonna be the focus of the video today, particularly the four reasons I think it differentiates itself and you should consider it as either an avid professional astrophotographer or an enthusiast that's just curious about more time spent photographing the night sky. The truth is that the more opportunities we allow ourselves to be creative, the more opportunities we allow ourselves to develop and to differentiate ourselves. Getting that first camera opened up so much of our creativity, so much of the day, and getting something like the Nomad opens up the night. It expands our reality and allows us to begin to create whole new worlds that we couldn't have imagined. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about one reason that even people who aren't interested in astrophotography should consider getting the move shoot with Nomad. To very quickly explain, the purpose of a star tracker is to allow your camera to move with the rotation of the Earth, such that you can use longer shutter speeds to capture more light and a better signal to noise ratio, bringing in effectively more uh, data and detail into your photographs of the sky. So put it this way, if you're using a normal wide angle lens and you're following the 500 rule, you can usually get away with, let's say, 15 to 20 second exposures. That means you're still boosting your ISO to something like 3200 or 6400. So when you bring in a star tracker, you can extend that shutter speed to two, three, five, ten 10 minutes. And if you're doing that, you're bringing in a lot more light. You're bringing in a lot more data. Now it becomes a compounding effect here. Not only is the photo cleaner, not only is it more detailed, not only is it richer as a result of the signal to noise ratio, but it is also going to be a much lower ISO. This allows everything else to continue to expand, to be better and better. So a star tracker effectively allows you to shoot better exposures at night. Now, understanding how a star tracker works actually leads really well into the second reason that you would want to get the Nomad. That is simply that you defeat the need for an ultra bright lens. Now, let me explain. Typically, when we lose our light, when things are getting darker, we tend to look for a wider aperture is the answer, right? If your 2.8 isn't cutting it, then maybe an f1.4 will. So then you go and you buy this bigger and you buy this more expensive lens. And the idea is that that brings in the light. Well, this inexpensive tracker, this lightweight tracker, it's a substitute for the weight and cost of that brighter lens. Now, what that means is that you don't have to have as much in order to get the same results. I think ultimately, if you can be more effective with one lens that has a moderate aperture rather than a handful of lenses that are super bright, you're cutting down on so much cost and you're cutting down on so much weight. Moreover, you're freeing up that mental space that all those lenses take up by knowing that all you have to do is use what you have with this. Now, the other benefit when you can work with an f4 or even an f5.6 lens as a result of the long exposures that this allows you to do to generate the light that you would have got with a brighter aperture, is you can also get the best quality out of the lens that's available to you. So maybe you do have an f2 lens or an f1.4 and maybe it's not at its sharpest wide open. Well, you can actually stop it down and put it on this and get the best results possible from that lens. All this is to say 
that this small, inexpensive, you know, $230 under one pound item, it's a substitute for bigger, more expensive glass. And that's something that ultimately makes night sky photography so much more accessible. Now, I believe the most compelling reason to get the Nomad is also the very simplest thing about it, its size. It weighs just less than a pound, and that means that you can fit it in your bag. You can fit it in just about any experience you're aiming to bring it on without some abundant nuisance, right? This just means that it can always be there. Now, why is that so important? Well, it boils down to what I think is the most important principle in astrophotography, and that's that you have to consider the non-astro part of your photograph just as much as the astro portion. The content, the landscape, the foreground is what makes an astrophoto as fascinating as it ultimately can be. The best astrophotos are typically not just the night sky. They're usually some blend of foreground, of story of narrative with the night sky, right? So why does the size of this mean that the landscape becomes more interesting? Well, if you're bringing this to the hard to reach places, if you're bringing it around the globe to the far north or the far south or those places where weight is truly important, you're putting yourself in a position to create more interesting photographs, to bring in better foregrounds into your astrophotos. So really, it's just the availability of the item. If you have it, you'll use it. If you're bringing it to more interesting places, you'll come home with more interesting photos. It's really as simple as that. Now for just a moment, let's put on our technical hats, right? Let's dig into something that I think is a little bit more advanced. And I encourage you when you finish this video to go watch another person's video that's a little bit more technical. There are people that really explain this very well and I'm only gonna touch on it conceptually. Now this is the idea of signal to noise ratio. And what we always want to do is improve this ratio as much as possible. But what does improvement actually mean? Well, think of it like this, and this is way oversimplifying it, but a very basic equation. More photons plus less noise equals better signal to noise ratio. Now, a better signal to noise ratio in visual or more practical terms is more natural and more vibrant colors. It's typically a sharper and more robust image. It's effectively better data. Think of it that way. Now, have you ever seen a photo of, let's say, Andromeda, and you think, man, I can't imagine how somebody was able to take that photo with their camera. Well, what they're doing is maximizing the signal to noise ratio via typically a number of tactics, but almost always tracking. And that's simply that they're bringing in so much more data than is possible without a tracker. They are capitalizing on the benefit of a good signal to noise ratio in order to bring out the colors that exist in the cosmic dust of Andromeda, the colors emanating from stars, the glow that naturally exists in our galaxy. These are things that you actually cannot see unless you are using more advanced tactics like tracking. So don't feel frustrated if you head out with a tripod and a wide angle lens and you get something beautiful of the night sky, but you feel like it's a little lifeless, like the color isn't there. That's not something you're doing wrong. That is the limitation of your camera and your gear. It has bounds. Now, some people might get their camera infrared converted. This is another way that you can improve the color intake of the camera. But most people, to improve the results they're getting, to improve that signal to noise ratio, they are tracking. And the Move Shoot Move Nomad allows you to do that exceptionally easily. Now by this point, I'm sure you're starting to notice that there's a bit of overlap by each of these points. And that's because effectively, it's a simple product. It moves a camera precisely for designated moments of time in order to more efficiently capture light. It's not that complicated. But what this does that's different than the marketplace that it exists within is it capitalizes on two efficiencies, cost and use. Now cost is straightforward. On its own, it's just over a couple hundred dollars. And by the time you've added some accessories to improve the efficiency of its use, it might be somewhere around $400. It's not much money, especially when the competition is consistently double or much, much, much more than that. 
But efficiency of use is what's more interesting to me as an impatient photographer that focuses on movement, focuses on reactivity. This really only takes a couple minutes to set up, especially in the Northern Hemisphere where it's a little bit easier to align the system, but that's a subject for a different video. Look, I'll be entirely honest, I'm not typically very patient. I haven't done a lot of astrophotography in my life because I don't like sitting around waiting. I tend to be somebody that's moving. So something like this that allows me to set up quickly, it opens up the possibility of that kind of photography without adding the nuisance that I mentally am incapable of working through. I just hate feeling burdened, right? So this unlocks that efficiency of use. And that's really, really a profound thing. It may seem simple, but for a lot of us, that's the difference between using the thing we buy and leaving it to collect dust in the closet. So why should people that aren't self-identified astrophotographers get this? I'm, honestly, I actually don't identify as an astrophotographer. It's just not something I've put a ton of time into, but this is still an absolutely astounding tool that's made it into my kit for a very specific reason. I want to differentiate my work. And there are certain things that are tells wherein you're doing something similar to everybody else. A tell is copying trends for one, but another tell is noise. Specifically, when taking photos of the night sky, there's a very clear visual difference between photos that are taken with a better signal to noise ratio than photos that aren't. The quality is kind of astounding once you start to dig into it. And so that differentiates your work, not just by going somewhere beautiful, not just by composing well, but by quite literally creating something cleaner. It's not the biggest thing in the world, and there's going to be a lot of people who say, well, I think I've got great work and I don't use a tracker. And honestly, like, that's fair. It's not an absolute requirement, right? Maybe you're good enough to differentiate in other ways. But to have another area where you're capable of differentiating, to create that cleaner image that stands out simply by the fact that it is easier to look at, well, it's another avenue for you to be more effective and it's another avenue for you to stand out. Now, I do have to thank Move Shoot Move. They sent me the Nomad to test and to make this video about. They didn't really give much instruction. They just wanted me to use it and to provide my thoughts. So thank you to the team at Move Shoot Move. You guys made something really, really compelling. Over the years, I know they've iterated and expanded upon this to make it better and better. And while it's pretty dang compelling thing to me right now. It's exciting when a small company like this is really changing the marketplace. They've redefined star trackers, not just in terms of cost, but in terms of the ability to use them in efficient manners. So I think this is compelling and I would suggest it to pretty much anybody I know that takes photos. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Let me know if you're interested in star trackers at all, if you have any experience with the night sky, or if you have any questions about how to be more effective with astrophotography. I might not be the most experienced guy, but I have spent a night or two under the darkest of skies, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Now with that, get out there, have an adventure. That's what matters most, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.